What's cracking, everybody? On my recent trip to Colorado, I took some equipment along that I realized uh, was missing some essential accessories. This is one of them that I'm going to get taken care of tonight. Let me show you what we've got going on. This is my axe. I've had this for several years. I don't use it much, and so it wasn't really on my mind. As you can see, there's no sheath. And I found on my trip that I had a hard time finding an appropriate place to store this because I was worried about this sharp blade gouging either something on my vehicle or one of my equipment containers for other stuff, you know, cooking gear, etc. And so it was pretty obvious that I need a sheath. So I checked online, get a, did a Google search for axe sheaths and saw several designs. There's several very common ones, but the one I like covers the blade portion to right here. And then um, it has a flap over the top that snaps shut somewhere in the middle. And with this flared edge on the top, uh, I think that'll work really well for this axe. So that's what I'm going to make. First step is to do a tracing of this axe head. All right, I've got the tracing done. Now the next step is, um, there's two things to decide, they go together, uh, is whether I want to stitch this or use rivets. Both are very popular with axe, uh, axe sheaths. And um, I'm not quite sure yet what I want to do. The other thing to consider is that this end right here, if you look at the axe, it flares quite a bit at that bottom portion. And so uh, it's very common to use a, a welt type of thing insert to fill out some of that bulk and that will work really well in this narrower area, but right here towards the back, it's gonna be a little thick. Once that decision is made, then I can decide how far from this line to go um, for stitching. So if you wanna stitch, you want it to go, at least what I like to do is about a quarter inch out, and then the stitch will be about an eighth inch. So that gives you an eighth inch on each side of the stitch. And you could do that all the way around. Uh, if you're gonna, if you're going to use rivets, or if I end up using rivets, I'll have to account for the size of the rivet and how much material um, I want on, especially the outside of the rivet, so that it has enough material to really hold. All right. After perusing my hardware stash, I found that I have one line 24 snap remaining and that is I think a good size for this project. I do have a bunch of line 20 snaps, a little bit smaller, but I don't think they would be a good match on this. I don't have rivets that will be long enough to get through particularly this far end over here and so I have opted to go with a stitched side um, it will go around this edge, the bottom edge, and up to the top, to about right here. And then this is, is the top end where the flap will fold over with the snap somewhere up here. So I'm going to start um, drawing my quarter inch line out around the side and then get the design for the flap up at the top. So here's what I have so far. Here is the cutout for the left side of the ax. This is uh, how it will be facing you. And then I cut that out and use that as a pattern for the other side. So this will be the opposite side. Ax will slide in this way and then this will fold over the top. Now, this is not the design. That uh, would be way too long and not aesthetically pleasing. So what uh, I'm just, I'm not uh, very gifted in the geometry department. And so what I am doing here 
is making a real life pattern. This is out of 28 pound paper, slightly heavier than normal. Uh, you can see on this piece, I started to draw um, the flap coming over and then I remembered the thickness of the ax that I have to accommodate. So um, this faint line you can see is roughly how I want the flap to come over. I think I do want it to come a little bit lower. One uh, consistent problem I've had doing leather work is I always get the snap too close to the edge of the material and there's not enough to get your finger under to get the snap loose. So I'm gonna decide on this one um, where I want the snap, which is about right here, I think, roughly. And then I need to have enough material under that that you've got something to grab onto to pull that snap loose. So that's why I erased that line and then remembered uh, I have to accommodate the thickness of the ax. And so I just cut this this way. I'm gonna put the ax back up here and fold that over and then uh, get a design from there. All right, the pattern is done. I was able to find it. It just so happened that that straight edge right there when folded over with the thickness of the ax makes a really perfect like curve that way. So you can see where I'm planning to have the snap and uh, that'll go about like that. So there's my two pieces. Now to uh, pick some leather to pull them out of. In my scrap pile, I found a perfect piece of leather I can get both sides out of. Uh, this is about 11 ounce leather. Uh, so it's fairly hefty, which is what I would like for my ax sheath, very durable. And I should be able to get out of the uh, remaining pieces on this, whatever uh, filler or welt material that I need. So uh, you can see I've already traced my patterns and let me grab my knife and get these cut out. So I have my two pieces cut out, uh, the mirror image came out really well. They line up really well. Uh, but you can see I've got here a little oval put in here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skive that a little bit, uh, thin that out because right now it's so thick by the time it bends over I don't have near as much flap as I originally intended. So I'm gonna thin that out just a little bit you know, within that circle so that that will bend um, I may thin it all the way out to the edge, but uh, we'll see. That's project next. All right, I think I've got that. We'll get the bend I want, get it over the, uh, over the way I want. And after I mold that, uh, a wet mold, or at least get some oil on this, that will should bend over as far as I would like it. Um, skiving is one of my least favorite things about leather work because it leaves such a mess. And it tends to be uh, uneven, and it may be that I just don't have a lot of practice in it. But uh, anyway, I got it done, and overall, it looks nice. So, next step is to, uh, on this piece here, get my a stitching groove put in up to the top and then after that we'll be to get the welts ready. Alright, groove cut in. Um, we're doing edge work like this. I always go to one of these. I believe this is called a saddle groover if I remember right, and mine is just perpetually set at an eighth of an inch. So I did double check it as I always do, just because you never know when this lock nut is going to come loose and that's going to slide. But uh, there it is, and I did groove both sides so that the stitching will sit down nicely in there. And then uh, I have one of these that I do use. Uh, I believe the one that I usually have in here is the number four, which is four stitches per inch. So it spaces, it gives you a mark every quarter inch 
so that your stitching is nice and spaced. And you only have to use that on one side because you're gonna punch through the other side. So, and what I have found, I generally do pretty well at this point with um, getting my stitches to line up on both pieces of leather. All right, here we go. I wanted to make sure I got this snap in the right place, so I went ahead and did a preliminary stitching. Um, and this actually fits really well. If you look at the top here, this is all but flush. And yep, and then this is bending beautifully over the top. And that's ultimately ended up right where I wanted. So now I'm just gonna take my awl and put a pin, um, a hole punch, or a mark for a hole is what I wanna say, right in this area. And that will transfer onto the back side, and then I'll know where both of those go. Then I will break these apart again, pull the stitching out, and I'm gonna put either my initials or maybe my surname right here at the bottom, uh, which is one of my alphabet sets. I'll do that. That will also make this identifiable, which will be nice. So yeah, I'm very happy with how this has turned out. Uh, for the bottom welt, you can see that it ended up being just perfect just to double this up and then um, I skipped it down at this end right here down to a single which is what it is the rest of the way around so uh, yep it's worked out great it's a nice fit just what I wanted all right here's where we stand um, I did go ahead and put a surname on that you can see it came out nicely now I just need to wait for that to dry. It's uh, about 11.30 at night, so I'm gonna go to bed and finish it in the morning. So this morning I took about an hour and got some Neats foot oil put on the hair side of this leather. And on the grain side, I put some tan coat, which has pretty much already dried. I'm gonna give this about 24 hours for that oil to sink in a little bit more before I hit it with some color. That's where we're at until late tonight or early tomorrow. All right, it is finished. I went with the dark brown gel antique and I did uh, the name in yellow, um, I used the, we have here, Echo Flow Cova Color Yellow. And I did that and then I put some resist on it knowing that it would still darken. It actually darkened a little more than I expected. But I was really going for something to match the uh, beige stitching that I had elected to use. Got my snap perfectly uh, mounted right where I wanted it. Um, it's got a great fit that's not gonna come off. And um, I just barely finished burnishing the edges because as the saying goes, your project isn't finished until your edges are burnished. So um, yeah, it's got a nice sheen to it. I got a good buff on that and uh yeah i am very happy with how that turned out so all in all this was probably about a five hour project an hour of that was stitching it up the first time to get the snap centered and to get the bottom um how much welt to use on the bottom figured out and I think that was well worth that time to get things to fit uh, this way. So a uh, four to five hour project. Um, I thought about it after I had started putting the oil on that I could have done a border stamp around that would have been pretty easy. Would have maybe taken half an hour to do. But um, for what this is going to be and how it's going to be used, just the name identification, 
is good enough for me. So there it is. Thanks for watching.